meteorologist Ashley Ruiz. Check out how beautiful the sunset is this evening. Just beautiful, stunning. We have high clouds in the sky. Very comfortable out there after a gorgeous day. 69 degrees right now. Feels like 68. We have a nice, comfy breeze. So it's going to be pretty good weather to sit out on the porch, bring the dog out for a walk, or, or just eat dinner outside. Temperatures are in the 60s and 70s, but we will fall into the 50s for most areas. We'll have a couple of 40s out there tomorrow morning as well, but clouds are going to quickly return to the area all out ahead of our next cold front, which will move in tomorrow evening, but we'll still be able to warm up into the 70s under partly to mostly cloudy skies, and We'll have scattered to numerous showers and thunderstorms out there. Yes, we'll have rain chances in the forecast, but not enough to help alleviate our drought situation. So the latest from uh, or on the drought monitor as of this morning, a good portion of our area, including Point Capi Parish, West uh, Feliciana, portions of Iberville, West Baton Rouge, EBR Parish, under a severe drought now. And so to put it into perspective of how dry we've been over the span of the last five months for Baton Rouge, October of 2021 all the way to February. It's the driest stretch of weather, the stretch of five months on record since 1893. And so, yes, we have elevated rain chances in the forecast tomorrow, rain chances next week, but unfortunately, doesn't appear as though it's going to be any extremely beneficial rain. It will help. Anything will help, but still, this is going to be very manageable. Three quarters of an inch to maybe an inch and a half with some locally higher amounts, at least over the span of the next seven days. But looking down the road, and I mean long term, appears as though we could start to get more rain later in the month or early April, just hopefully not all at once. Now, tomorrow, we have a level one risk for severe weather. This is going to be mainly in the afternoon, evening. Damaging straight line winds will be our main concern. But with the current setup, a couple of tornadoes can't be rolled out as well as perhaps some hail. But as you see, floodings on the low end of things. As for the timing, so tomorrow morning we'll have clouds quickly return to the area and a couple of coastal showers. This is around 5 o'clock in the morning and you can see some spotty showers, some thunderstorms moving in mid-morning, maybe late morning. But as the day goes on, we, we start to go into the afternoon hours. We'll have all that daytime heating, the heat, the moisture in place to help showers and thunderstorms to break out over the area. This is around 3 to 4 o'clock and you see scattered to numerous showers and thunderstorms. These storms will be the ones that we have to watch for any severe activity. Here's 6 o'clock. We have clusters of storms, and now they're moving into Mississippi and to Alabama. And then once the cold front passes, this is around 9 o'clock, our severe weather threat will come to an end, but we won't be totally done with the rain at least until about midnight or so. And then the cold air is going to surge in behind this front. We'll have clearing skies, but winds are really going to pick up. I'm talking 15 to 25 miles per hour sustained with higher gust on Saturday, making it feel even colder out there. So by Friday night into Saturday morning, we're waking up to the mid-30s. It's going to feel much colder, and then we're expecting a freeze Saturday night and into Sunday. So wake-up temperatures are going to be in the 20s and 30s. So Saturday is going to be cold, windy and chilly, but then we're warming up a little bit on Sunday, and don't forget we spring forward daily light saving time does begin. And then next week, we're in the 70s and 80s once again. So this is going to be a very uh, short-lived cold blast. So don't worry, just a couple of days.